Howdy there YouTube, back again with another episode of extra content actually. This is usually what I do in my extra content videos, but uh, I've been having some issues locating a sawback removed bayonet German World War I, and so obviously there's some misinformation out there about what exactly a sawback removed bayonet is, and unfortunately I don't have one because I haven't been able to locate one for a price that would fit my budget for this collection. And as you can see, I prefer the, the battle used ones more than something that's super well preserved. And um, so I just, some of these are kind of unique and there's some of the terminology that you can uh, use from it for your own collecting purposes and also some things so that you can uh, see if it's an authentic one or not. Especially on the sawbacks, you can easily get taken because people have been faking them basically since they were new. Damn it. So anyway, this is a real sawback bayonet. And if you see the, t the teeth pattern, it's an actual saw. It's designed to cut wood. That's what it's made for. You can see that there's an extra little bump on that side. That's what an authentic sawback looks like. So, going piggybacking on that fact, if there's a scabbard that's sold with the bayonet, and you want to know if it's an authentic scabbard, it's pretty easy to tell because this, these saw teeth do the same thing to the scabbard as they do to wood. So when you look in the throat here, see those two notches? This scabbard came with this bayonet. It has been matched with it for a long time. So that's one thing if you find, because they'll, they'll fit on there. A regular non-sawback scabbard will fit on a sawback easy enough. And that drives the price way up. But if it don't have those marks where it's been put in and out of the sheath, see? See how nice and square that is? That's a regular 9805 Butcher Bayonet non-sawback. That's a sawback. So that's something to pay attention for. And like reproductions, they also, they won't have been taken in and out of the scabbard enough to, to have established that pattern on the scabbard. So this one... The maker's marks are, can be on this side or they can be on both sides and I'll show you one of those in a second. This one's an R Stock and Company and it's seen some use. It's got a flash guard, it's got it's taken some damage, some handle damage there but you know that's that's genuine use you know. You can't fake that. That's not going to be on a reproduction. And it's got the, you can look on the hilt here if it doesn't have the little kings the king with the hat, the king sign with the hat, you know it's not a authentic one and it's got them several places on there as well as, as the date on the spine. If you've got a sawback bayonet and the date on the spine is after a certain date, I'm not exactly sure what date that is but you can look it up. And if it's made after that, the date that they stopped making them, well then obviously somebody put those teeth on there. <clears throat> so this one here you can see it's got an 18 date, whereas this other one had a 15 date. And this one is what they call a double, double maker marked. You can see it's got a goat leaves hammers far on one side, and then it's got this Schubert and Salzer on the other side. So it kind of looks like it was rebuilt at some point, so I'm not sure if that was a rebuild mark. Or if it was how they did it in the war where they had two different manufacturers, one for the blade, one for the fittings, and then, you know, then it was assembled. So, that's the double, the double dealio. Now with the ears, I don't have a high ear one here to show you, but these, that's what they're talking about here is the ears are taller. And these are the flash guards. There's some that don't have the flash guards on them, like this one here. Doesn't have the flash guard. And these are the quillbacks. Anyway, the whole point of this video was that if the bayonet looks like this, this is just a standard 9805 bayonet. That's not a sawback removed. A sawback removed would look just like this, except for it would have a ground notch from here to here, where the, where the teeth were. And then the marking here should still be preserved sometimes. Sometimes it's not. But if there's not a notch there, 
it's not a sawback removed. It never had a sawback to begin with. See? Just like this guy. See how the, the uh, fuller goes all the way up to the top edge there? It won't do that on a sawback removed. It'll be cut down to here. It'll be noticeably some will be missing. Some of that curve will be missing. So this is grease too, by the way. This is caked on grease. I just left it because that's the way it came. Not that I'm a crappy owner. So these are the S98 quill backs. I think they call them machine gunner bayonets or something. I think is another common term for them. But generally they're known as quill backs. And you can see they've got the the sharp part there up at the front kind of fattens back out. And I'm not sure if they reproduce these or not, but what they do have are, uh, they're Peruvian, so if there's a crest back here, this one doesn't have it because it's a German one, but the Peruvian contract ones, they're all Simpsons, I believe, they're really not worth as much because obviously they never saw combat or even had the capability to see combat. They, you know, they should have these acceptance marks, just like a regular later 9805. This one is kind of rare because it came with the metal battle scabbard. And I guess these are replacements, but they're super rare. This is the only one I'd ever seen. And it's still got some of the, the black and green paint left on it from underneath the frog. Too bad the frog wasn't with it. But, uh... I would imagine if they do reproduce them, they're going to come with these because, yeah, maybe not. Maybe they'll come with the leather ones. And this would be a, a parade style, and they're not worth as much either as a regular issued one because obviously they were put in stocks, you know. They weren't, you're not going to run around and come out with a bright chrome bayonet. This one's got a lot of it missing. But it's got the WKC Knight on it. Um, Leather scabbard, that's generally what you encounter with the S98. But it's the same blade, same exact blade. The same quill back design there. And they're really long. They would, I would imagine they would have been horrible in the trenches. Even these butchered 9805s must have been really long for trench combat. You know, on the end of an already long rifle. Now you got this giant pig sticker. Yeah, I could see on those videos by... Uh, in range TV and the like where that would have been completely useless you know these were designed for open ground and that's definitely not what the trench warfare was so just one of my references here this one's a good one if you do a lot of German uh, collecting of bayonets if you like to look for the weird ones this has a bunch of the weirder makers some vintage or uh, World War One vintage ammo pouches some World War One vintage dog tags these ones are a little bit cooler than the World War II because they have the information of the people that you could actually look up and, you know, a lot about their different units. Whereas the World War II ones just have the units, so it takes a lot more research and a lot more cooperation by people that don't live in your country to get the information. So these are kind of cooler. And then I've got this, uh, it's actually a transitional helmet that was... Uh, converted for World War II use. And I guess there was a lot of these that were encountered by the U.S. troops at the end of the war, probably British too, I'd imagine, at the end of the war. So a lot of them came back as bringbacks. But it is a World War I era helmet. It's just been repurposed. So anyway, I hope that clears up some of the confusion about the sawback remove because I don't know where these people are getting their information for their listings from, but this never had a sawback, so it couldn't possibly be a sawback removed. This still has the sawback. So if it had the sawback removed, it would be in between these. It would have, you know, it would look kind of like this, but it would have the slot milled for the sawback to have been removed. So that's it. Rant over, but just thought I'd show you some of these from my collection before I put them back. Thanks. For watching and see you next time.